Driving along the overseas highway is a unique journey. It's 110 miles of ocean views, natural wonders, and with a little bit of history dabbled in. <laughs> it also includes 42 bridges, one of which is a seven mile bridge. You'll soon discover that each key has its own character, vibe, and unique attractions. Let's talk about what some of the keys have to offer so that way on your next trip down you'll decide whether you want to see one, some, or all of them. And you might be surprised to find out that Key West is not the best. We are launching at Sombrero Beach so it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. They're doing yoga on the beach, there's volleyball, this is a cool little place. Phil, you looking for plugs? No plugs. We're not going to have any sinking today. If you're wondering why we keep talking about sinking, well, obviously you haven't watched our funniest video to date. So I'll, of course, link that down below. We are following this map through the mangroves. Right now we're on the jungle jam portion of the trails. And as you can see, they have easy, adventure, and crazy trails. So the jungle jam is a crazy trail. Oh, we're on a crazy trail? Yeah. Okay. This is kind of cool though. Looks like we're in a secret place. Pretty crazy, right? I feel like we're playing bumper cars in the kayaks. That was a little tight. Uh, no paddles needed here. But this is going to be a little tight. We are trying to exit this area. We've been kayaking now for about an hour and a half. So we're going to head toward the beach. Still yeah. a long way back. If we go, we're going to have to go right. Yeah. I don't want to go left because well, that's actually, forever. It, we're actually taking the longer route then because we're gonna have to go up and back. If we go down, we're gonna go out and go back. So you wanna circle back to where yeah, we were? Yeah, we should probably go back the other way. All right, I gotta lay down here. Okay. <laughs> I see that. The bumper car action here. Yeah. I think it was easier coming back than going over the first time. Okay, that was a lot of fun. We didn't know what we were doing in there, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> They're heavy, right? I got it. The keys are divided into five regions. Key Largo, Ala Mirada, Marathon, Big Pine and the Lower Keys and Key West. So let's start with the most northern key. Let's talk about Key Largo. Key Largo is home to the largest artificial reef in the world. Mm -hmm. So this makes Key Largo the diving capital of the world. So if you are certified to dive, that is the key you're gonna wanna stop at first. You'll also find the 510 foot USS Spiegel Grove, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be some of the best diving around there in Key Largo. Now, this is also where the state park is, John Pennekamp, Coral Reef State Park. Yep. And that's the park that all the campers are dying to get into, but they tend to book out immediately as soon as the day opens. So if you're trying to get into that state park, make sure you book early. Yeah, start a year out, might help you. Key Largo is known not only for its scuba diving, but also for its bustling city life. Mm. It is the closest key to Miami. Therefore, it is an easy trip to everyone just wanting to get away from the for the weekend. So it can be very touristy <laughs> and very busy. We are getting ready to snorkel on Lou Key Reef and I'm super excited. Yeah, we're at the Bahia Onda State Park, I think that's how you say that it. That is actually how you say it. Woo! We, we have heard been it practicing. said a million different ways, but 
we finally got the low down <laughs> on the correct way and I'll probably actually never get it right. Yeah, it looks like Bahia Honda. So Luki actually is a marine reef. It is protected, so it's supposed to be beautiful. So we're here at the state park. We did, we're doing a charter out. We have yet to dip our toes in the water, so today will be a first. And it's not that expensive. I really like doing it through the state park because some of the funds do come back to them. So it's only 30 bucks a person to go out on the charter. It's nine bucks for a full set of snorkel gear. And you can also rent a, um, a suit because the water does get a little chilly out there. And we have elected to rent the suit too. Yeah, it's a half suit. So it's six bucks, six or yeah, nine, six, six bucks yeah. each. Um, so not bad. But again, you know, we're going to be out here four miles off the coast, they said, in some pretty deep water. And fans, a wetsuit, and they give us a vest for buoyancy only. So I'm sure we'll we'll inflate that a little bit because we'll need all the help we can get. Uh, I got plenty of buoyancy. I'm not really worried about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I was once told that I was inherently buoyant. So... <laughs> not looking good for snorkeling this well oh, no. this wells are about four to five feet so he's going to go to the other side and see if it's going to happen yeah sea state is not on our side Welcome to our Keys to Canada tour. We are freaking excited to have you along for the ride. <laughs> That's right. And we are going from the Keys all the way up to Newfoundland, and we hope you join us on the journey. I will drop a link down below so you don't miss a single episode. Next, let's talk about Isla Mirada. It spans six keys, very laid back, and it is known as the sports fishing capital of the world. It is an upscale small town atmosphere with scenic bays and ocean views, sunshine, boating, fishing, and locally owned restaurants. Isla Morada is also considered the most romantic key. Oh, that's so nice. Interesting. We just gotta live in the moment. Blow your Monday, let's just go for it. Pack your bags and I'll grab the door. We'll head straight for the sun. I've been thinking we should get away, get away. Leave our troubles for another day, another day. Gonna take you to a sunny place, sunny place. I just wanna be with you. I'm in one of the two prison cells here in Zachary Taylor's. I can touch either side and it's pretty, it's pretty gnarly. Stone, dirt floor. I, I would not want to be in here. Yeah, if you were in here, you're in some serious trouble. <laughs> yeah. This fort was actually built almost 200 years ago and we just discovered not only was it used way back in the day but they also employed it for the Cuban Missile Crisis. That is so crazy that was in like the 1960s. <laughs> I mean when you walk through here the, the place gets more and more impressive as you walk around and you read the placards and the signs that are around here. Um, the, the foresight that they had back in the 1800s yeah. to build this um, is incredible. The walls, the outside walls are five feet thick. I mean, it's just mind blowing. I'm not a history guy, but you know, something like this, when you're standing in the middle of it, yeah. um, it kind of grabs you in the feels. And I told Stacy while we were up on the top wall there, I said, you know, if these walls could talk, it would be such an interesting topic oh just my to gosh. listen. And the people who stood on those platforms, it is crazy, especially when you see the decades and the changes, yeah. like we could see a pulley system that was put in, you know, to carry all the armor around. And then you could also see a hoist that was used probably mm -hmm. early on. And then the, well, it wasn't an elevator, but it was the, uh, the gears. It was for kind of a dumbwaiter ish type yeah, pulley system. system. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty neat that it was built into the fort. So, I mean, the ingenuity that they had back in the 1800s and over the years. So don't forget to have a little history along the way as you're sipping your umbrella drink in the keys. <laughs> yeah. Have one for us. <laughs> Next up, let's move on to marathon. We are finally in the middle of the keys. And this is where you will find the beginning of the Seven Mile Bridge. And Seven Mile Bridge was once considered the eighth wonder of the world because when it was first 
first laid out, people didn't really think it was possible no. until it was done. <laughs> right. Marathon is considered the most family friendly mm -hmm. of all the islands and it's filled with activities for everybody such as golf, world class diving, snorkeling, boating, opportunities to swim with dolphins. You can also mm. stroll the white sand beaches of Sombrero Beach which we were fortunate enough to do. Yep. And you can also enjoy abundance of water sports like kayaking, stand up paddling, and of course we are already mentioned fishing. Marathon is a bit busier and more bustling than Isla Morada. We are currently walking on the old naval station. Truman Annex. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. This became a Navy base, what was it, 18... 23. Oh my gosh, I already forgot. 17 ships were brought here by the Navy to protect this area from pirates. Yeah, it was, it was disestablished in 1974 as a Navy base. That's a long standing history of, of being part of the military over the years protecting the harbor in Key West. Pretty neat. And we just walked past um, the little White House, which was used by Clinton and Truman and Eisenhower and Kennedy and, and Carter. It's so crazy all the history that happened in that house. The Truman House was where the Air Force was actually enacted. They signed the paperwork right there to create the Air Force. On the Navy base. You're welcome. Go figure. We just found out that if you really want to, not only can you take a behind the scenes white glove tour of this little White House, but you can take a 20 minute drive in the presidential car. I want to do that. Yeah, it was pretty cool to see a couple just drive out of here in that car, but it's a bit pricey. It's $600 for the tour for one to six people. So if I could find four new friends <laughs> and we could split the cost, or yeah. if I had one more day down here, we could squeeze it in. Yeah, that, I, that would be a part of history I would love to do because it's the behind the scenes and you literally have to put on white gloves. And, and you get it. to touch and feel and hold yeah. real artifacts. So that's pretty neat. Big Pine Key is best for those that love nature over nightlife. Immerse yourself in one of the Lower Keys popular nature tours. Many prefer to do that by kayak. It offers unforgettable opportunities to view migratory and wading birds in the unique, tranquil, natural area of the key. Don't forget the flora and fauna, which are really beautiful. Big Pine is the jumping off point for Lou Key, which is a shallow coral reef that is considered the most spectacular shallow water dive in the Keys. And this is the snorkeling trip that we attempted to do, but unfortunately it was canceled for us because the waves were just too much for us to snorkel in. So yeah. we were pretty disappointed. We could have got in the water, but the captain was more worried about us getting out of the water in the boat as it was bobbing up and down. Well, that and um, people getting tired yeah. and not being able to make it back to the boat safely. So I think five foot seas is a little much for snorkeling. Yeah, and you know, they he thought that on the way out. And he said, you know what, we've got everybody here, let's go out and, and, and give it a try. Yeah. And we were hopeful. I mean, midway out, it wasn't too bad. But where we where he was taking us, when we got there, it was like, there was just no way. Make sure to pay attention to the key deer signs on the highway, as they're everywhere in Big Pine, and they are protected, so watch out. Yeah, I know. We were really shocked to find out that there were deer down in the Keys. And this is a... I guess a cousin to the white-tailed deer. And yep. it was really cool to see them walking around near the beach as we were driving through that key. And they're much smaller, so I mean, you really have to pay attention to see them. I'm not sure if I like key lime pie, but we're about to find out. And just in case I don't like key lime pie, I also got a key lime cheesecake. <laughs> and I have my fork at the ready, so let's go. Mm, that's pretty it's good. It's actually good. Yeah. It's really good. I've never had key lime pie before, no. Oh my goodness, it's very good. It's very okay. tangy. All right, I'm gonna try the cheesecake. <clears throat> cheesecake? 
Mm. Okay. I like the cheesecake better. No. Same tangy, citrusy taste, but much creamier. I agree. Cheesecake for the win. Key lime pie is good, but the cheesecake is where my heart lies. All right, let's move on to Key West. It's the key that everybody talks about. It's the southernmost point, and it's also the key with the nightlife and the party atmosphere, but there are a few other things you can find there, like some historical buildings, yep. like the Hemingway House. You'll also find the Truman... Annex, the old naval base, yep. And of course, Fort Zachary Taylor. So there is a lot of history there amongst the uh, the bars, the restaurants, and the nightlife. Yeah, and you may even be lucky enough to be down there when a cruise ship is in, in town. And then you have, what, 3,000 other people <laughs> mingling about. Um, so the restaurants and shops can get a little busy down there. The cool thing is all the cruise ships have to be away from the pier before sunset. Yep. So you can go to Mallory Square, hang out, and see epic sunsets there in Key West. Yeah, and if you want to get your picture taken by the famous buoy down there on, on mile marker one or whatnot, <laughs> wait till the cruise ship leaves because the lines are yeah. forever long. Or be there super early in the morning <laughs> yeah. before the crowds hit, yeah. for sure, before the cruise ships. Now, which key is the best? That's the question. And it really just depends on what you're looking for. If you want a party scene, if you want nightlife, if you want to be up till 3 a.m., well, <laughs> Key West is the key for you. True. If you want more family friendly, if you want to hang out a little quieter off the beaten path, then maybe Marathon is it for you. If diving epic reefs is your number one priority, you're probably going to want to stay more toward Key Largo. Now the beauty of the Keys is it is 110 miles. So really if you stay right in the middle, right. um, it's an hour each way to Key West and then an hour to Key Largo. So if you really wanted to make the drive in, you could. We actually stayed kind of in the middle at two different campgrounds. We stayed at Sunshine Key and Fiesta Key. And those were a sweet spot for us to get out and tour the Keys for sure. So we did make a trip to Key West. A couple uh, of times, yeah. yeah. And it, it's a nice drive down there. I mean, when you're down in the Keys, you're not there to be in a hurry. So enjoy the drive. Enjoy going over the, the smaller Keys and, and just checking out the scenery. You won't be disappointed. Now, you're definitely not going to want to stay at Key West and go all the way to Key Largo because right. that will be over a two-hour drive. And remember, there is one way in and one way out on the overseas highway. And if there's an accident, then all traffic comes to a halt. So yeah. just kind of be aware of that. And remember, when you're down in the Keys, don't be in a hurry because nobody, nobody else is. is. <laughs> um, so plan accordingly. If you if it takes you an hour to get someplace by looking at your your phone and or your GPS, give yourself another half hour buffer just in case. Now there's a ton of places to stay when you're at Key West, whether you have an RV or you don't have an RV. Right. There are campgrounds, there are Airbnbs, there are VRBOs, and you can also rent places on the campgrounds. They all have like cabins and homes you can rent that people don't typically think about that can be a bit cheaper than the hotels and the Airbnbs. And some of them even have um, RV trailers that you can rent. Now with the two campgrounds we stayed at, we like them both. We really enjoyed them, but I have to tell you, I like the second campground much better than the first it had way more of an islandy laid back beach atmosphere than the first one and it didn't feel as crowded right and the one you talk about is fiesta key it had a restaurant it had a beach it had a bigger beach area like she said it was really more laid back and the sunsets are the mm -hmm. same from both of them it just depends on what view you want but those were kind of both both of those were kind of a sweet spot yeah. for getting in and around the keys the reason we felt like it had a little more space is because the rvs were offset so instead of being side by side by your neighbor they're actually offset so they're much longer so you feel like you have more elbow room and a little more space and it did offer a lot more space on the outside so you could sit out and enjoy the weather Remember, space is a premium in right. the Keys. It is very expensive, so you're not going to get off cheap there no matter which option you choose. So, But the goal is to pick the island that's going to offer the best vacation for you. So your personality and what you're looking to do. Wait, wait, wait. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. Special. You'll see. <laughs> Why can't I say it? Put it in my own, my own head. Oh, that's scary. For seven <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're jumping rope. I know, I know. Okay. How's he going? Pulling up in sight. You keep messing me up every time. Oh, yeah, it's me messing you it up. Is. Uh -huh. 
I think you should write scripts from okay. now on no, instead of No, hell, me. hell no. It'll be, huh? <laughs> That was a tough one. Oh, shit. I'm sweating. <laughs> and that... Bleh. I am taller than her. It's good stuff. <laughs> Be friendly. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Big bag. <laughs> good God. Big bag? Yeah, Got big a bag. big bag I got on? a big bag. <laughs> big bag. No. We will drop that link down below so you don't miss a single episode. Yeah, I do that again. And Phil's going to take you all the way to Newfoundland. <sighs> Yeah, I am, because I'm driving. 